Hello and welcome to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise series. This morning, as the pink sunrise just comes over the horizon over there, we are admiring one of our flamingos. This is Esan, I believe his name was. And this is because he is one of the flamingos that we are going to be sending to the Trade Center first thing today so that we are able to afford our next animal. So I was taking another look at the Trade Center today and flamingos are still not seeming to be a very common animal being traded right now. I'm not really sure why, but I'm thinking I might put up, I, I selected a few, um, a few flamingos who we're probably not going to use for breeding, but are not our lowest, um, like our lowest genetics uh, flamingos either, because I want to put some good ones out there um, to make sure that people can start their flamingo. Oh, interesting. We got an achievement. Um, sorry, got distracted. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to give people flamingos that will help them actually start a good little flamingo habitat going. So I don't want to just put our worst genetic flamingos out there. Um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna post a bunch of them, maybe for, I think, what did I do last time? I've mentioned this a couple times already. I think it was 300 conservation credits. It was like two or 300 conservation credits. I think all of them are pretty similar and they're all pretty good apart from like one stat each, I think, goes into the yellow. So I'm thinking maybe I will try putting them each up for 400, see if they go for that. If not, then I'll lower it, but yeah, I want to... Oh, we need to make a bit of conservation credits because we have some really big animals coming up, so I don't want to undersell us too much. Okay, and here we go. So we have three flamingos up in the trade center now. Um, Perhaps we should just refresh it and make sure they're all still there. Oh look, and one's already gone. So um, it must have been our, our silver. So essentially what I did, I put up our gold flamingo for 500, our silver for 400, these two for 300, and then these two for 200. I figured that was a good way to keep it fair and um, all of that. But it looks like our silver flamingo already went for that 300 conservation credits. It doesn't really look like we got 300 conservation credits, but... Uh, uh, maybe it is just taking some time to refresh, hopefully. I didn't mess that up and put it up for like three conservation credits. Um, but we also made another achievement, the education rating to four stars. So that is awesome. I always had quite a, um, I always struggled quite a bit with education rating in my zoos before. And I think what I have discovered helps a ton is actually these uh, conservation boards. Um, I was putting up a lot of like just the normal animal boards and speakers a lot before, but actually I think the conservation boards, having them all over the place is helping a ton. I put a few up actually in here as well in the like dead space in between habitats and yeah, like look at them, they kind of, they stop, they read and I just make sure that all the ones in like a given area are all different different information and it seems to be working really well. And let's just dive right into the time-lapse for today's episode. So what we are building today is a section called Elephant Elbow and this is just a little, um, I guess, U-shaped sort of pathway that connects our guests to the next big section of the zoo and in here is going to be our Indian elephants. As you can see, I it, it's kind of done now, but I used the wall pieces um, just to kind of map out how big the path circle needed to be um, in order to make the habitat big enough. Spoiler alert, it ended up not being as big as I wanted it to be, but in general this is kind of how I like to do a lot of my um, habitats. You basically do a little bit of the math, you know that each wall is four meters long and you can find the square er the square footage that were the square meters that way, I suppose, the area of your habitat. And that way, basically for this zoo, right, I kind of want everything to be right on the grid. And when you put up a just barrier, you don't really know that it's matching up to the zoo grid. So that's why I do it that way. That way I kind of, I know how big this area is roughly, and since the paths are going to be the actual barriers, that helps a little bit. So instead of inlaying the entire habitat here into the ground, I wanted to bring the pathway up. Um, the zoo in general, like the actual landscape of it is very flat and it is meant to be very flat. It's 
kind of imagine it. It's in the middle of a city. This area has totally been flattened out for construction already. Um, so I wanted to give the guests a little bit more elevation in this kind of very built up um, artificial structural way of, you know, the paths with the curved slopes and, you know, keeping with this kind of like narrow sloping that, you know, should be accessible to everybody, um, as well as kind of this circle around. I did use the angle snapping there on the path so that the circle could kind of be, you know, as uniform as possible. We're trying for a lot of like very structured shapes in this suit to go with that kind of modern eco feel. Um, and yeah, these the wall pieces here are just the plaster pieces that are non-gridded um, so that I could kind of play around with them as I, as I wanted to. And I'm recreating the curbs here that you might have noticed. Um, I created something very similar in the in that little water walkway area before the catwalk. Um, just to kind of hide that. I don't really, I, I like the cement pieces because I think the cement goes really well with this theme, but I don't love the wooden barrier around the pass. I don't like that curb. So I figured this is a good way to hide the curb and also give us a little bit of space in between our path and our habitat. So of course, this is being built with a lot of little pieces, which can be very tedious and kind of annoying, but um, with the kind of overall um, look of this, section being very uniform and it is very symmetrical left to right. I was able to do quite a bit of like copy and pasting and you'll even see here what I end up doing is I placed in place these curb pieces and then I just control X and move them down to be wall pieces because this way they are perfectly aligned with each other at that angle. I'm not like messing with angles at all. This just made it so much easier and I know using larger pieces here would have saved a little bit of money but there's definitely a bit of a balance between saving money and saving time because the whole process of like control x going into construction selecting the larger piece moving it down it just it adds so much And essentially after I do that very top um, row there, I, as you can see here, I just duplicate it down and it, yeah, it, it ultimately, I mean, of course this habitat took a little while to build and I don't mind the kind of tedious aspects of building sometimes. I find it very zen and very chill if, you know, listening to a podcast or something on the side. But yeah, always having those extra little, like being able to duplicate, being able to, you know, figure all that out from here. It, it, saving a little bit of extra time is very helpful. Um, but yeah, we, now I am playing with the barriers, so I knew I wanted to use these glass panel pieces for the barriers, um, just because, like, I wanted to, at first I was thinking we used those glass, um, those short glass wall pieces in the Flamingo Falls area for the barriers, and you can't angle those downwards here, so I didn't want to have a different barrier for the pathway going up and then have those ones for going down it, it just it didn't really work out so I wanted to use these glass panel pieces and then I do end up kind of playing a little bit with what I want to use for the actual um, connection pieces later on but those are easy to just add in afterwards and you can see here I'm also doing a very similar uh, technique um, to just you know control x on those I tried just control x on those panels um, which is actually what I end up going with but it works better on the inside so essentially you just take this is all gonna get <laughs> this is all gonna get deleted because you can see here it's not lining up it's not working so i end up just control x on each of these change it into the glass panel move it out to the inside so they're not overlapping too much and then i just do this all the way along um of course this section isn't huge so it's not that big of a deal but yeah that's that ended up all the way through. I also, you can see at the back there, um, in the jump cut, I raised the back edge just to make a non-glass, um, a non-glass railing on the back side because there's nothing to see over there anyway. Um, I figured it wasn't worth trying to do the, uh, do the glass all the way along there. But I did end up using those metal beam pieces for the, in between the glass panels. And here is when I realized that I put the water on the wrong side <laughs> because this is where our habitat gate is going to be. So of course you'll see the water disappears here um, and we are kind of keeping with that same theme of those rocks and I think here actually I also changed the color to black on the walls as well. Um, 
because I figured the white on white just felt like too much. I really like the black and white mixture, so I think that works out very well. But yeah, after after I spent a bit of time at the beginning here organizing this so that the uh, so that the paths would um, go over the water properly, we do end up getting rid of the water over here. It just it it didn't really work out with the with the habitat gate and. It's fine, we, we just move it over to the other side, which I think is a little bit better anyway. And you can also see that, yeah, I started playing with the, I don't know, I put in this like hedge barrier because the um, null barriers were so hard to like grab and see and yeah, it was just driving me nuts, but we got there in the end. Barriers paths in this game can be so hard to just, to get working, it's, yeah. But you know what, we got there, it was fine. Um, but, yeah, from here, I think the next thing that we are doing is, yeah, so this is going to be a little shelter area for them. I thought it was going to be kind of fun to put their little shelter right underneath the staircase so that, you know, they have some private shelter where guests can't actually see them when they're in there. Um, just to kind of make them, you know, feel a little bit like they have some private and, I mean, it's not going to be quiet under here in practice. There's people walking over top, but we can say that, you know, these, um, this filling that we're doing in here is, can, you know, insulated a little bit at least and then yeah this is where we end up putting the larger pool of water so bring that down um so indian elephants they do need a swimming area um so that is why they don't need a big swimming area so that's kind of you know i, I ended up putting this it's not a huge swimming area but it's not bad and then of course bringing in um this is one of their enrichment items as well it just happens to kind of match really well with what we did in flamingo falls and there's a few themes that i wanted to keep throughout this entire zoo as we as we build all the different habitats. So, you know, these circles probably look very familiar if you, you know, watched us build that section of the zoo as well. And I think I was just checking on, yeah, which, what foliage that they wanted in here. So do a little bit of decorating. And then obviously once we actually get the animals in here, we will, once we actually get the elephants in here, we will fix the, the, um, the foliage and all of that. But yeah, you also kind of very briefly saw there just putting up the flamingos for trade. Um, we had a few, flamingo, few flamingos in our trade center and I wanted to put those up for trading just so that we could get the funds that we needed to purchase our elephants. So hopefully as we kind of finish this build, you will see our conservation credits increase and we will be able to afford to adopt a couple of Indian elephants. So if you look back to our Flamingo Falls habitat, it is a very, a very manicured garden area. There's kind of, you know, nothing's really wild growing for the most part. Everything's kind of very in place. It's very manicured. This habitat, I wanted to make it, you know, like it has the kind of those like circles for the bridges and it has some of those modern features and I wanted to make the rest of it just feel a little bit more natural for our elephants. So you'll see I kind of went ham with putting out rocks to kind of line our little river here rather than um, the kind of curb pieces that we used in the Flamingo Falls just to make it look more like a natural river than a, you know, dugout pool. Um, another spoiler for the end of this video, though, is that it turns out that the elephants can't walk over these rocks, so it ends up looking a lot less rocky and actually, to be honest, probably a little bit more natural in the end because, yeah, they needed a lot more area to wander around and they had a hard time getting into the water <laughs> with all of these rocks here. Turns out elephants are not the most um, dexterous of animals, which makes a lot of sense to me um but yeah i just kind of wanted to add in you know plenty of foliage here i don't think that the elephants really had any issue with you know the amount of foliage if anything i think we ended up adding a little bit more in the end so that's nice i i, I really like habitats that can be very you know obviously they want a lot of space free space to like wander around and stuff but the plants just add to it so much <laughs> And then yeah, the waterfalls. So we're kind of in play here for a moment and I wanted to add, you know, just that kind of similar waterfalling feature that we see in the beginning of this zoo as well here. Since this uh, sort of wall we built here out of the stone temple pieces does look very similar to the features that we have in the Flamingo Fall areas, just to kind of, you know, again, keep with the themes that we're going with here. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up this time lapse. Here we are, we have finished our Indian elephant habitat. I put up a few um, benches, bins, um, education boards, and donation bins, of course, just kind of along here with some basic 
um, little shelters. I, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this still. I think they could definitely use like, I don't know, maybe go out a little bit further outwards so that there's more shade on the path and less behind, and then maybe like a cross beam just to show a little bit more support here. But I will work on that a little bit later. Um, of course, we can't put the bins and stuff on the slopes, so I decided not to put- oh wow, that trash can is floating. How? Can you even do that? Alright, <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know, I, I don't even think you can like, you can't even raise this above the ground, I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, obviously you can't put trash bins or donation bins along the slopes. So I kind of, I've left these blank for now. I think we'll see if our education rating isn't high enough. I might put some education boards here at least so that if, when people inevitably stop here to look at the elephants, they can at least get some education. I also will have to put in the speakers. I haven't done that yet either, but that is not what we are going to do for the end of this episode. What we're going to do for the end of this episode is actually try to adopt our elephants. Um, so let's just click play so we can see how this water is working. Um, that one's working. This one we actually cannot see. Is it, does it need to be swung around the other way, maybe? Let's try it. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, it was just facing the wrong direction. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I kind of uh, took a sort of price. Okay, so you probably saw I did put up our flamingos for trading again. Um, they didn't get traded up the first time. Looks like our gold flamingo got traded this time, but nothing else did. So I'm just going to put all these guys up for a little bit cheaper now. Um, let's go 200 for our bronze flamingos. Trade. Come on, we can do it. <laughs> I don't know why the button's in this UI. Like, sometimes I have to click them so many times to make them actually work. And then let's go 100 for our regular flamingos. Just to try to get them traded and get that little bit of extra money. It's also obviously timing whenever people are looking for them, um, but we do have a few. So, I, I mean, I've logged in um, this whole part of the zoo. I don't film all of this at once, so it has taken a few days. So I have gotten a few hundred just from logging in multiple days, um, which is great. So let's take a look at what we can purchase for that Indian elephant. Okay, so they actually have some that are not too... Okay, yeah, so I'm sorting it by price. So we go from like affordable to all of a sudden incredibly not affordable. <laughs> and there are no... Oh, these are, they are all quite old and all of the males are very expensive. Okay, shoot, maybe... Okay, maybe we'll, I might just have to keep coming back and checking. Um, those extra few hundred might help for if we can get anything in between these two, like maybe we can get a couple for a thousand each, hopefully. Um, I know, these elephants have really bad genes. 23.2, I wonder, let's take a look at their Zoopedia. I want to see how long they actually um, are breedable for. Okay, so they don't reach sterility until death. And they usually expect to live until about 60 years old. So that's actually not bad. We should, if we bought a 20 year old elephant, we should be able to get at least, I would assume, a couple of babies out of them. Um, let's see. Yeah, so they, okay. So they essentially take a year to give birth and then, oh no, that's two years? Oh wow, okay. <laughs> so they are pregnant for almost two years. And then uh, they have a lot of space in between that as well. So maybe, maybe we could get a couple of babies out of them if they, if um, we get lucky. Oh, here we go. Look at that. We have, now we have mostly males. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's just a matter of waiting and refreshing and seeing what we can get. So we definitely want um, some good fertility if we want to keep breeding. Um, yeah. The male options are not good, but this female option is actually... Not bad, I don't love the short longevity gene, but in theory, maybe we can read that out. I think I'm just gonna keep on refreshing, trying, seeing if we can get some slightly better ones closer to that 1000 conservation credit mark. Um, it looks like we already traded out some of our flamingos. Yeah, we got rid of one of our bronze flamingos. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep on kind of refreshing here until we can get something that we actually want. Okay, so it looks like we have a, I'm gonna snag her real quick, 13 years old, um, she's got good stats, 
I want to snag that elephant before we lose it. Um, so now we have our female Indian elephant, Zara, and we're going to have to keep kind of refreshing for an affordable and decently statted male as well. Um, but it looks like our flamingo, more flamingos sold? Yeah. Our other bronze flamingo sold. Um, these two looks like nobody really wants to adopt them. I might have to just reduce the price. I mean, she's not that bad. She's not that bad. But maybe it's, um, I mean, they are only male as well. Let's take a look, actually, while we are kind of waiting for another decent male to get put into the trade center. Let's take a look at the flamingo market. Yeah, I mean, there's nobody else on the market. I don't know. I mean, I guess, I, don't know, I think we're better than these ones they have to pay money for, but perhaps people are only looking for females right now, or I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll just wait. We'll wait and see if our uh, male flamingos get adopted. All right, and here we have it. We have our the exact male that we were looking for, 1,000 conservation credits, um, all green and orange stats. I'm going to just grab him <laughs> before we lose him, and let's get our new elephants into the zoo. All right, and here they are. Wow, look how much bigger he is. That is incredible. Okay, well, looks like they are struggling a little bit to get their bearings in this habitat, but... First things first, let's take a look at their traversable area. Um, Alright, so they cannot get over the water, that is a problem we will need to fix. First thing. Okay, there we go, so now they can cross that bridge. Um, this is the only entrance into the water, and I want to make sure that they can get into the water on this side as well, so... I am going to, and also on this side, I wonder if it's, be, like, is it the rock work? They just can't go over it, I guess. Um, I'm going to just send all of those into the ground a bit more. Maybe, you know, off camera, I might just expand this a little bit more. Um, I thought that it was enough space for them, but I, I really do want them to, you know, I want to make sure that they have enough space. So I might expand this out a little bit more. Um, in the future but for now anyway i think i'm going to end this episode here um with an elephant pooping of course so um, i hope you enjoyed this episode of course filming or building our habitat is not gonna go perfectly the first time um it doesn't it typically does not so i'm glad we kind of were able to mitigate some of those problems and I, I think I will expand this habitat out as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, leave me any feedback, questions, anything that you have in the comment section below, and I will talk to you in the next episode.